new frequency separation tool, and AI-3 for satellite removal. Welcome to SETI Astro. Some great updates right before the year end here. I did manage to finish uh, the AI-3 model and add it sensitivity for the satellite removal. So be sure to go to SETIastro.com under Astro Programs, Cosmic Clarity, get the updated Cosmic Clarity. It's AI-3 for, for all of it now, sharpening, denoise, and satellite trail removal, as well as going to SETI Astro Suite and downloading uh, the new version 1.10. And if you have Pix Insight, be sure to put the Pix Insight script repository in for uh, the normal scripts because I do have the frequency separation tool in Pix Insight as well. So when you open SETI Astro Suite version 1.10 now, you're going to see a quick navigation button. Now that I'm getting more and more tabs here, it may just be easier to hit the quick navigation and, and select the one you want under Cosmic Clarity Satellite. You're going to see the clipping sensitivity now. So the lower values will be more aggressively clipping uh, the satellite trails. So I know there's been a lot of cases in the past where dim trails weren't getting uh, removed properly. So this is going to uh, affect that. I have it defaulted at 0.1 right now. It seems to work for, for most everything. If you find it... Um, clipping extra stuff, you may want to raise that value. Before it was hard coded at 0.25 and that's why we were missing so many satellite trails. The 0.1 seems to be a really good sweet spot for everything I've tested it on, but now it's going to be more user definable based on your setup and rig. And you're also gonna find the frequency separation tab. And we're gonna look at that here in a second as well. And then if you're in Pix Insight now under script city astro, you're also going to find the frequency separation script in here. And it looks uh, fairly similar to the uh, SETI Astro Suite 1. You're going to be able to load in your source, your radius, and, and do, this, do the split here. So I'll, I'll cover the SETI Astro Suite standalone first, and then we'll do the, the Pix Insight uh, one afterwards. So for frequency separation, if anybody follows... Uh, Sky Story probably have seen uh, his utilization of frequency separation and layer-based photo editing software, and I'm bringing that out to, to everybody that may not have Affinity or Photoshop or whatever. So uh, you can go ahead and load your image. It's going to work best on star-less images. Otherwise, the high frequency around the stars gets really prominent, um, but you can... Um, Load in your image, there's a, a zoom in and out. And you can make the, the screen bigger if you want. I did not put a size to resize to the preview because you kind of got to be zoomed in to see what your frequency separation is doing. There's a couple different methods for your frequency separation. Gaussian is the, is the default. That's really the one you're gonna use the most. Um, the tolerance only is used with the, the bilateral. Uh, but just keeping it on gauge, and I think that's the one most people are going to be familiar with how it's intuitively working. You could raise your radius and click apply, split high and low frequency. So now you can see on the left here is the high frequency detail, and on the right is the low frequency contrast and color. And, and that's, the, that's the whole point of doing this. It allows you to um, process them differently. Maybe you want to affect broader, more global color and contrast boosting in the low frequency one without affecting high frequency detail. And then on the high frequency one, you can apply additional sharpening without affecting things like color noise and stuff. Since this is normally done in some kind of layer-based photo editor that has a lot of options, like the Pix Insight one here, even though it isn't layer-based, that, that has a lot of options we'll, we'll go over. But I did put in some uh, simple sharpening tools right, right into this tab. So you can do um, scale sharpening and wavelet sharpening also a uh, high frequency denoise too. So this is all gonna affect the high frequency stuff. If you prefer 
to process the high and low frequency images separately in some other software, you can save them separately. There's a save high frequency and a save low frequency. So you can save them out of here. And then likewise, after you're done processing them, you can load the high frequency and load the low frequency right back into the tool to do the final combination. So let's go over uh, some of this sharpening. Scale sharpening is going to be the easiest. Um, in the high frequency data, there's actually positive and negative values in here. So what scale sharpening does is just multiplies everything by some set amount. So right, right now it's set at one, multiplying anything by one just returns itself. It's, it's not gonna change the image. If we raise this up to like a 1.5, click apply high frequency enhancements, you can see the crunchiness has gotten higher, right? The contrast in the high frequency detail has gone up. And then if we just want to look, we can, we can combine high frequency and low frequency to get our preview here. And this is the, the final combined image with that particular enhancement. This does have the fit to preview, so you can see the whole thing. You can zoom in and out. Uh, and then from here, you could also save the combined image. Let's say you didn't like that amount of sharpening. I do have a undo button here, so that's gonna be great. There's plenty of undo room in this particular application, so you can play with sharpening and denoising and stuff a bunch and click on undo a bunch to, to get back to the original. If you ever just want to change the radius, maybe, maybe this wasn't looking right for you, you wanted a little higher frequency detail, you could reduce that radius and just click apply again. And now that's gonna give you the, the appropriate level of detail you're looking for there. Wavelet sharpening is just what it sounds like. I'm sure everybody's, well, most people are probably familiar with wavelet sharpening. It has the number of wavelets here. I go up to five and these are all, you know, power powers of two. So the first one is just radius one, radius two, then four, eight, 16 uh, for the detail in the wavelets. And then the wavelet boost is how much it's just gonna boost those wavelets by. So we can go ahead and look at that enhancement. And wavelet sharpening is going to be a, a more subtle, less heavy handed approach, right? The, the scale sharpening is just like a big hammer. It hits it all by the same amount. Wavelet sharpening really does look at the detail across it and sharpen each of those layers of the detail. And then one final one here, let's just um, try to get in some noise, right? When you do sharpen, you do introduce some noise because you're sharpening, because noise by, by definition is high frequency. And I do have a high frequency denoiser in here so you can, you know, do your sharpening, get it how you like, and then check the enable high frequency denoise, click apply on that, and, and see if that denoise amount was correct for you. Maybe you wanna go heavier with the denoising. And then again, once you're getting the, the look of how you want with your sharpening, you can just click combine and it's gonna, it's gonna combine them back for you. I will say word of caution when you're sharpening in this manner, um, less is more, <laughs> less is more. You, you can absolutely start over sharpening your image and making it look really, really over processed, right? So, you know, you, you, you don't want to go, you don't want to go crazy is all, is all I'm saying. Now for the Pix Insight version, pull up the frequency separation tool. You could have your, your image already in the background there. Just click separate high and low frequency and it's going to give you um, a, a similar thing. You can kind of move it around. It's not as smooth, right? The, the standalone is going to be smoother than the, the UI in PixInsight. But you can mouse wheel in and out for the zoom. I didn't add buttons uh, just because it, it makes this even bigger and kind of clunkier. Let me know if you need a dedicated zoom button, but the, the mouse wheel is, is working and it does default right to 100% uh, while you're looking around. And then since PixInsight itself does have sharpening and denoising tools in it, what you're gonna do from here is just create the images. Click create the images. 
and now it's split it out. We have our low frequency and our high frequency data. And then from here, you can go ahead and sharpen it how you want, right? Um, maybe you're doing multi-scale median transformation and you want the, and, and this is very similar to wavelets, right? Multi-scale median transformation, you have your different wavelet, your different wavelet sizes, you could adjust those, you know, apply them how you want into your images. And then when you have your high frequency sharpened and denoised how you want, uh, maybe on the low frequency, uh, we're going to go in and, and give it a little chrominance boost here. Okay, now, now we have our low frequency and high frequency how we want it. Now you can go in and open the frequency separation tool again. And we're going to load our high and low frequency down here, where it has low high frequency image, load low frequency image, and then combine them. And now it's going to go ahead and do that combination for you. So here is our before one and our after one where we did a slight amount of sharpening and some, some color boosting on it. Again, this is going to be um, in your processing stage after you're already in the nonlinear stage and you're looking for, you know, little, little additional sharpening, little tweaking at the end. If you want to do a lot more sharpening and stuff, um, Sky Story does have some more advanced tips on how to go about uh, using frequency separation and all that. I'm, I'm not making a dedicated video on frequency separation processing right now. Just trying to get the tool out there to everybody. And finally, let's go over AI3 with our satellite removal. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pull up just an image so we can see the differences between that sensitivity. So you have your sensitivity slider down here. When you're live monitoring, it's going to disable the slider you can only adjust this slider when you're not live monitoring right so if you start live monitoring and then you decide you you do want to change the aggressiveness on the clipping you're going to have to stop the live monitoring adjust that and, and continue it because while it's live monitoring it's kind of just not autopilot right it's not taking any inputs from from the user so let's let's just go ahead and look at um, some differences in sensitivity. So I have my folders loaded. I'm just going to batch process the one that's in there as our test for this. And you see our other little window pop up for us. All right, that one's done. I'm going to lower it down to like a like a 15 and then we'll do do like an an 8 and I think those three images should be enough to um to look at the comparison to to let you know what that sensitivity is doing. All right, so here's our three images. Uh, they're all processed through the satellite. The first one here was on the sensitivity of 30. Now this is one that I had noticed, it just wasn't removing the, the trail at all on. Uh, that's a big reason why I put the sensitivity slider in here so we can make sure it's getting removed because the, the, clipping, the clipping set point was kind of just arbitrary that worked for the most and it, it just wasn't doing, it just wasn't clipping enough. So I think a lot of people were seeing some uh, faint trails coming through like that one. So this is at the sensitivity of the, the point 0.3. Here is the sensitivity at point 0.15. And like I said, I have it defaulted to point 0.1 right now. And then here's the, the point 0.08. And it, and it definitely clipped it really perfectly for the, the point 0.08 in this case. And remember, your stacking program is just going to ignore any pixels with a value of zero. It, it, it doesn't even go in the stack, right? It's, it, it just like, for those pixels, that image might as well not even exist. So it's not even like putting in AI generated what it thinks should have been there kind of a situation. So all these other pixels are completely unchanged going into your stack. It's really just the satellite trail gone now. And AI3 for both the detection and the removal is much, much better than AI2 was. And now with the sensitivity slider and uh, defaulting it to a sensitivity of 0.1, it should, it should vastly improve the amount of satellite trails that it can detect and get rid of. 
I hope everybody's gonna get some even better use out of the satellite trail removal now. I think this is just a problem that's gonna keep getting worse and we're gonna need tools like this to automate the, the process of removing them out of our stack for us. I'm excited to start the new year. I just wanna thank everybody that's kind of been been in the community for a long time here, a viewer of SETI, SETI Astro. What an amazing year I think we've had trying to get tools out to the, the broader astrophotography community. I hope everybody has a great start to the year, can start using all these tools. Please comment, like, and subscribe.